Hey, Steve Basic Architect from the Build Show Network. We're out here at our Riverside project. The river's actually behind the camera today, not behind me. But today we're going to talk about a real simple detail. It's one that pretty much is instructional from our structural engineer um, that we've just been doing for years. But I think it was it's worthy to have its own video and discuss it. And then we'll get a little bonus uh, piece in the video here. But anyways, we're going to talk about the band joist. So when you look at the floor framing, obviously, there are simple spans. You can see that they bear down this line and all the joists move across. So the bearing points are on the ends. They want to bend in that fashion. But as I go down the wall here, you'll notice that as my stud frame comes, all of my studs are going to fall right on the top of all of the joists. So it's not going to be a problem there. But the question is, when you turn the corner and now the rim joist is parallel to the floor, what do you do? Now, a lot of times we just put in a single rim board, but my structural engineer, while he thinks that is okay, we like to go just the extra step and notice that along this line, we double it up, right? So we have the single down there because the studs are going to sit on top of the trusses also. But here, where we don't have any truss work, we have that double joist coming in, or double band joist. Notice also here, you get a really good shot. There's that inch and an eighth Advantech subfloor that we're using on the system. But to finish it out, you'll notice over here, we have a little depression. And so we have an LVL that comes down the full length, frames there. We have a short one that goes from the wall to it. And then we're allowed to do that depression. We have a seven and a quarter inch perimeter down this side and that side because we're doing a two by eight um, T stud on the exterior wall here. But that's that depression that helps us coordinate a curbless shower in the owner's suite in their bathroom. So let's go back to the studio. We'll break out some drawings. I'll show you how all this stuff gets illustrated on the framing plan. We'll have a little further discussion. Of course, Big Red is going to join us. And uh, yeah, I'm going to walk over here just so you can see that river because it is a beauty. Let's go back to the studio. Steve Basic from the Riverside. Hey, we're back at the studio. Hopefully you like that little trip out there. You know, it's interesting. Even a simple floor frame like that, you get a little few little nuggets of, uh, hey, let's do this. Let's drop the shower. Um, let's add a little bit more structural integrity. So got partial floor framing plan here. Let's talk it up. Got big red in hand and uh, let's get after it. All right. Got our good friend, Big Red here. So that floor framing plan out again. Um, remember last week we talked about trimmable open joists and why we have the solid side on this side, the open side over there. We talked about a bunch of LVLs, but today we're gonna to concentrate down in this corner. Um, notice here, call out engineered wood band, and that's basically a single band. And the engineered wood band, that's nothing more than you have the top of your foundation. You have your, in this case here, we have our double mud sill. Well, the single wood band is the board that we run around and basically band up the floor frame. And then here is where our open joists come off of. And the subfloor goes all the way out. So it basically ties this condition here, which is if I'm looking at it in plan, I have the top plane of that joist coming in and then I have the band here. So it makes that T. So when I put the plywood on and glue that and nail this all up, I get a nice rigid structure based on the 90 degree orientation of floor joist to band joist. It ties it in really nicely. And then of course we come in and we put our wall plate and build our walls up above it. Ground is out here somewhere. Right? And foundation wall here. Um, but that works very well when we have this 
perpendicular situation. When we're down here and we have a parallel situation, and in a parallel situation, we would basically have the foundation wall. We have our double mud sill again. And you would have our band there. But rather than it teeing into it, we are going to have our trimmable eye joist out here. Right? And then we have our inch and an eighth subfloor out there. So the other benefit of this is it gives a nice rigid connection there because you can also shoot some nails in there. You got the plywood, but that T-bracing, when I come in and we run our plate over the top of this, we get some added strength basically by having that trimmable joist supporting underneath the plywood, but we don't have that condition here. So the way that the structural, my structural engineer and I are, and it's a typical, you'll see it in pretty much every one of our floor framing plans, is when we get the perpendicular or the parallel condition where we have eye joist and edge of wall or band joist, we simply come in and call for a double band joist. And you can see it there. And it's actually even drawn in as a double band as opposed to the single band there and single band there because of the perpendicular nature. The parallel nature of that gives us this. So now we have two X in bearing capacity. Now, certainly that single band joist is most likely enough in most situations to be able to handle the load that's coming down, especially when you're at the edge of a building like this, it's typically the gable end. So roof load is coming down to this wall and this wall, and there is no roof load along that plane. So really the floor is just carrying the wall above and you know, exterior walls are probably somewhere in the range of eight pounds per square foot. So, you know, even on a 10 foot wall, it's 80 pounds, you know, coming into that. That's pretty much no work for the band joist. But anyways, in an effort to just get that situation a little stiffer and the fact that we have some uh, solid blocking in the middle, that's going to kind of come in there and give us a little bit of lateral tie in there, but we're really worried about um, what that vertical load is and bumping it up to two times, giving yourself a slightly better nailing service surface. These band joists, they typically run anywhere from, I think it's about an inch and a sixteenth to, you know, an inch and three quarters, depending on if you're using their band product or in a lot of cases, we just jump up and use an LVL there. Now, one of the other things I wanted to point out while we were down in this corner and you saw it out at the job site is we have a double beam that goes all the way across here and it's called out to inch and three quarters by 11 and seven eighths. 11 and seven eighths is compatible with the floor joist system. So it fits in there. It's an LVL beam and it is flush. So remember from again, last week's video, the flush condition means that LVL is in the same space as that floor plane. Um, and then we have the same two bys here. If, two two by 12s and those run into that double band joist. But basically what we do is we frame a hole like an elevator shaft or a stair shaft. But more importantly is we come back and frame into that. And you can see here, we call it two by eight at 12 inches on center. And basically what we're doing there is you have that double trimmer here, we have a double trimmer here, and those are 12 inches, and that's where the floor frame is. And then our floor sheathing is gonna run over the top of that, right? But we're coming in now, and we're framing this with two by eights. Now, the reason for the two by eight is we wanna be able to drop this down a couple inches, and so the two by eights will fit right in here. So they don't 
hang below, right? But we get that two inches and our two by eight goes in there. And it's, I mean, it's probably about five feet. So it's certainly more than adequate to get that. But what we're really trying to do is we get that dropped floor scenario because it's that drop floor scenario that allows us to put in a curbless shower system, right? Because if I drop that floor now, everything that I would have potentially done here and water would just run into the bathroom and traditionally you'd build a curb up here that's probably somewhere around four inches or such. By the time you're done putting in the finished stone and building the curb, by dropping that down, we can get a condition and building this up with, you know, mud bed, tile bed, all of that good stuff. By building that up, then we end up with a condition where our shower is now flush with our basement or our, our subfloor, sorry. Um, our shower floor is now flush with that condition. So the door sweeps literally on the tile floor. And of course, this is going to have some slope to it, minor slope where it takes the water to the drain there. But uh, that's how you uh, frame for a curbless shower system. And uh, yeah, don't forget. Double bands on the parallel, single bands on the perpendicular, and uh, you'll have a nice, strong system there. So, well, there you have it, folks. Big red it says we're done. So, we're done. When he quits, I quit. Anyways, but you don't have to quit watching videos. You can dive right in. Hundreds of videos on the Build Show Network. I got them. My colleagues got them. A ton of great information. Go check it out. If you're looking for more, it's the Basic Architect on Instagram. Give me a follow. Posting stuff daily, walking these projects, talking these projects, joining the discussion, ask questions, um, even challenge me. Go for it. I love a great discussion about building. You can talk about it all day, every day, and sometimes we do. I join up with Jake Bruton and Peter Yost on Build It Podcast. It's on all the audio channels and... It is even on YouTube, so you can watch the antics behind the scenes where those guys try to beat up on me. Lastly, right now, we have a 24-plus episode series on Build Show Build Boston. Yeah, we're building a beautiful 3,200-square-foot, uh, I wouldn't say ranch-style home because it is single-story, but it's probably pretty far from a ranch. Um, anyways, go check it out. 24 episodes. We're probably episode five. I can't shut up in those videos. I'm getting in trouble. They want to shoot 20, 30 minute videos and I give them an hour's worth of talking. So anyways, a lot of information being dumped there. Go check it out. Build Show Build Boston. Until next time, long live our buildings.